evening, YouTube. Austin Trench coming at you with another toy review. Here I have the Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman action figure. The two Batman and Superman figures are from the Batman v Superman line, first edition, where one of them has an interchangeable head, and the other, absolutely nothing. Now, the Wonder Woman I have is from the brand new Wonder Woman movie starring Gal Gadot as the title character. I recommend you please see that while you can. It's such an awesome movie and a very, very good entry in the DC Cinematic Universe. Not saying the rest of the films are bad, I'm just saying that I really, really liked Wonder Woman. And with that said, let's get into these figures. First figure on the roster is Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot. And this figure is absolutely stunning. It's really, really well done, unlike this one right here. This is the original Batman v Superman line Wonder Woman. And as you can see, the, this version has more detail and a lot better paint applications than this one. I do like to say they are missing one little detail, and that's on the belt area where the W is on her uh, belt. But, you know, that's so minor. But I do have to say the sculpt on her shield and sword are lacking while the Batman v Superman one are, you know, a lot better. But really, overall, it's an incredible figure. In terms of other accessories, as I said before, she comes with a prequel sword, aka the God Killer, wink wink, and her uh, shield as well. Again, I pointed out that the BBS shield and sword are a lot better, but these are prequel toys right here, so they're great on their own, and the detail on the shield is my favorite. I mean, it's got a hint of gold, bronze, and just ancient steel vibe to it, which really, really brings out the age of this figure, and wow, it really does look like it's straight out of the movie, which you should go see by the way. In terms of posability, this Wonder Woman figure is absolutely stunning, although it does have an issue with it standing upright. That's because of the feet right here and how they're sculpted to look like, you know, high heel boots. I really wish she didn't have that there because obviously when you're turning that into a figure, it works good as a movie character suit, but on a figure, it really doesn't help it right there. Other than that, she has a great uh, hip rotation right there and her arms move accurately as they should be, as well as the legs, they can rotate as well. Overall, this figure is absolutely incredible in terms of scope and all of its uh, sort of posability, but there's one problem I have with it. You can't really do her, you know, her classic ting pose that well because the uh, shoulders right here and the chest kind of get in the way of there. I wish there was a lot less, uh, you know, blocking of everything so that way she could properly move her arms or maybe add an extra joint to right here where the uh, elbow sockets are just to, you know, allow it to do the classic thing. But you can do the whole where she's got this and, you know, uh, Wonder Woman. You know, something like that. Now we come to the next entry in the DCEU, the Man of Steel himself, Superman. And you know what? This is actually an overall improvement of the original one, going to the Comic-Con exclusive Kenner-style Superman right here. You can see that there are various differences in the head sculpt. This one having a little bit of a better flesh tone, but this one I kind of like the pale look to it because right here, if you see, the detail is more obscure because of the thick paint job, while this one you can see more of it, especially in the light. But there are some problems with the sculpt on both of them, but overall, the sculpt on this one is absolutely fantastic. And the paint job, as you can see, is a lot darker here rather than on this one. It kind of is reminiscent of the Man of Steel suit design from the first movie he was in. Up close, you can definitely see the issues with each paint sculpt. Now, I do like the hair sculpt on the Comic-Con exclusive Superman more than the retread of it. That's because this design of Superman is, has interchangeable heads for it. Sadly, only comes with one, but as you can see on the Comic-Con exclusive one, it's only suited for one and you can't remove that head, so the paint job had to be altered to fit the easy-to-fit plastic. But, I do like the fact that there is better detail in this. In this one, it's just so clear you can just see everything through everything, like it's paint layered on paint. With this, it feels like the paint was sculpted on there. I mean, look at that. That is impressive, even by a figure standard of the DC Universe toy line, which is copying Marvel. I really do love how this one looks more, which is more than I can say for the Justice League toy line. Posability-wise, Superman has all the basic actions a Superman toy has. He can lift his legs, spin him around, yada yada. And here's the thing I don't get. Wonder Woman and Superman and all the other DC heroes have this little swivel on their ch on their uh, their side, but Batman doesn't. Well, he does, but he also has an ab crunch. I don't get why every other hero but Batman doesn't have an ab crunch. 
It's really, really disturbing to me. But overall, I do love how it's able to move. Everything is sculpted to a T based on Henry Cavill's look in the movie. And I'm very, very happy that we got this more accurate Superman figure. Whether or not you still hate the DCEU movies is still whatever to me. I still enjoy this figure line, and I hope to see it evolve as future movies hopefully come out and do better. As you can see with the cape right here, it's just solid plastic, which does endanger its movement as well as its ability to stand up, so you have to have it positioned in a right way. As an accessory, Superman comes with this laser beam eye head. It's not bad, but you know, I do like how it looks. It has a sterner face than this one, which I kind of wish that they used for this. Odd enough, it kind of makes him look like Archer. Here, just take this off uh, right here, just to attach it. Nah, you gotta be very careful. Pop like so, and then you gotta place it on. Hold on. My thunkin' chest and spring beanie arms. So yeah, you have them right here. Uh, you can even post them in, uh, if you have one of those figure stand things, in an epic battle with Batman, preferably to reenact the Martha scene, you know? I just call it the Martha scene because that's all anyone talks about about it. But, uh, you know, it looks good on him. It does make him look demonic, though, which is scary. More scary so than Batman's nightmare sequence. Oh my god. I really do just like how it clashes with the figure. It really gives it that dark edgelord look that I've been really wanting in a Superman figure. Not to say it hasn't been done before, I just really like it better on this. So Superman is an astounding figure, 10 times better than the Comic-Con exclusive one, and I hope you guys can find it, especially since the Justice League figures are expected to come out in early August. That's why I'm giving this figure a 9 out of 10. It's not for everyone, but it is an astounding figure if you are a fan of the Batman v Superman DCEU stuff. And finally, we come to the biggest character so far that's been introduced into the DCEU. The one, the only, Daredevil. I mean that guy from Fashionable Male. I mean the guy who gets depressed about critic reviews. I mean the guy who made Geely. I mean Batfleck. Okay, that said, this figure is awesome. I love how this thing looks. It's got a beautiful sculpt attached to it. It has intricate detail, except in the face, but we'll get to that later. I love how it's built and everything looks. It has amazing posability right here. Okay, it's got everything a Batman fan could want, and it still fits in the Batmobile car. It's got everything. Doing a side-by-side -side comparison of his Comic-Con figure exclusive, you can see that they both have the same amount of detail, but I feel that this Batman has better detail. It's got a more gritty, more faded look on the other side, rather than the Comic-Con one which looks really, really clean. Now, there is a subtle differences in cowl and face. The head sculpt has the same as this one, but the cowl is a solid color. See? It is a solid sheet of plastic rather than the sadly, uh, torn and faded cape that we had on here. I hope they don't use that for the new Batman figure in the Justice League line. I really do hope that they can fix that, but I do like how each of their facial structure look. They use the exact same mold for each, but the exclusive one trumps that in comparison to it. It has a better shade of shadow rather than this one. You can see that the skin tone on this one is perfectly light and centered for Ben Affleck's face, while this one is way too pink and orange at the same time, which is a weird coincidence, and it has a dab of gray on there that looks like it was lazily put there rather than actual time was put in to give it a real five o'clock shadow look. But over than that, these figures are fine. I like how they both look, although the cowl part right here where it connects is a little too clear while the head isn't. It's more studded for some reason and more leathery, I'm totally fine with that. It still keeps the detail there, but you know it's a more mass-produced figure, kind of like the Superman figure. In terms of accessories, he doesn't really come with any, even though he has a hand that perfectly means that they should have a bat grappler for it. You can use this, the kryptonite grenade launcher. You can just slide it right in here, and boom, it works perfectly, as you can see. There, there. And it's perfect, especially if you want to reenact that really, really badass scene in Batman v Superman. So, overall, this Batman figure has a lot of things you need in a figure like it. It's well sculpted, well painted, except in the face area, but that can be ignored depending on which one you find. That's why I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10. So, all together, they're amazing figures with small paint detail issues and accessory problems. 
but they're an incredible experience to have, and you know, they're worth it if you are a fan of DC and of the current movies. So all together, they all get a 10 out of 10. So hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and list down below what you think the future of the DCEU toy line is gonna be, and what build all figure do you think that we're gonna get with the 2017 Justice League movie? Thank you all so much for watching. Peace.